Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of absenteeism at work. Uh, so each um, each row is a different employee, and at the end of this we have a column called absenteeism absenteeism time in hours. So we're going to try to predict how long a given employee was absent from work based on a series of features. And uh, luckily for us, all of these features have been encoded already in proper uh, formats. So we have all of the categorical columns have been encoded properly. Uh, so uh, you can see here, this is an ordinal feature that's been encoded properly. And basically, um, so very little pre-processing is gonna go into this. Actually, uh, there is this one, which I don't know, you might consider this as a categorical feature, but I think it's all right to leave it on as ordinal because there is a progression through them. Um, all right, so let's get into it. Uh, so we're go it's going to be a regression task. So I'm going to import a whole bunch of different regression models, uh, and then we're going to compare the results of all of them. So this will be a bit of a, a quick video, but let's get started. Uh, so uh, we're going to import NumPy and Pandas just to work with the data. And then for pre-processing, we're going to use the train test split function and standard scalar from sklearn. So let's go ahead and import all this stuff, also our, all of our models. <clears throat> and we're going to load in the data using pandas.readcsv. So I can grab the file path right up here, paste it in, and take a look. And immediately we see we cannot visualize this properly. We see all these semicolons here, and that's because this particular CSV file has been delimited with semicolons. So we're going to go in here and change the delimiter to a semicolon, uh, and now we can see it properly. Um, also, we cannot see all of the columns at once, which I would like to see. So we're going to go into the console and type pandas.set option max columns none. Now I'll reload data and we can see all of the columns at once. All right, and like I said, everything's been encoded. Um, so let me see, what is this reason? Okay, this is a categorical feature, so I'm going to encode this one. This is the reason for absence, and there is no reason to leave it on like this, because each one of these values means something independent of the others. So we're going to one-hot encode this column, and then I think this is okay, because the months do go in, in ascending order to some degree. Um, day of the week also, it's all right, uh, but you certainly could uh, one-hot encode all of these. It's just not essential. Um, all right, so let's actually start pre-processing. I want to get a little information on the data just to see if we have any missing values. So we have 740 total entries, and uh, there's no column here with uh, any less than 740 non-nulls. So we're good to go with missing values. Additionally, you see we have only numeric data types in this data set. So let's start pre-processing. Uh, and I'll create a function called preprocess inputs that will take in a data frame. It will make a copy of the data frame and then it will return the same data frame. So at the top here, uh, we have our original data and then we're gonna call our preprocess data x. Uh, and we're gonna store the result from preprocess inputs and passing in data to x, and then we can take a look. And currently they're identical, but now I can go in and do my pre-processing in here, and we'll see the result down here. So uh, first let's start by removing the ID column. Uh, this is just a unique identifier for each employee, so there's no point to keep that on. Uh, it's essentially a duplicate index. So let's, uh, here, I'll, we'll drop ID column. So df equals df.drop uh, ID, and we're dropping from access one. Uh, and there we go. Now it's gone, but it, we can still see it up here. All right, so I want to one-hot encode this column, and then I think we'll be ready to scale our data. So I'm going to make a one-hot encode function, and I'll write this one just for a single column. Um, and we'll include a prefix as well. So uh, we're going to create a copy of our data frame to start, and we can use the pandas.getDummies function to take a categorical column, um, so actually it's x sub this thing 
to get the dummies for it. Now, uh, let me actually include a prefix on here so it's easier to understand. Pre prefix will be a reason. So uh, each unique value now has a prefix uh, appended to the beginning, and each unique value has its own column uh, where a given example will have all zeros and a single one depending on what the original value was of that example. So example zero here has a one in the reason 26 column. That's because example zero's reason for absence was 26. All right, and I'm gonna use this uh, to basically create some dummies uh, with pandas.getDummies for whichever column we pass in. So df sub column, and we want to include, include the prefix we pass in as well. All right, and then we're going to take those dummies columns and, and uh, concatenate them with the original data frame. So df equals pd.concat, the original data frame and the new dummies, uh, axis one, so side by side. And then we're going to drop the original column, in this case, the reason column, uh, because it's no longer of use to us. And we can return df. All right, so now we'll go in here and one hot encode the reason column. And uh, all we have to do is df equals one hot encode. Uh, and this function that we created takes a df, a column, which will, in this case will be reason for absence. Just grab that. And then a prefix, which is of our choosing, uh, we can make it reason. I'll make it lowercase like that. All right, now if I run this, uh, you can see our reason column is gone, but we have all the one hot columns we need on the end. All right, so now let's split the data frame. Uh, so by split, I mean uh, let's take what we're trying to predict. Uh, in this case, it's this column, how many hours they were absent. Uh, and we're gonna split it off from the rest of the data. So split df into x and y, where y is going to be what we're trying to predict. So I'm going to grab the name of that column. y is going to be df sub, uh, sorry, let me grab it. df sub absenteeism in hours, and we'll make a copy of it. And then x is going to be df dot drop absenteeism in hours. So x is everything except what we're trying to predict. Uh, so we're going to use x to try to predict y. Then we'll do a train test split. Uh, so currently, um, if we trained on all of the data, we would have no way to evaluate it after uh, uh, because the model would have already seen all the data. So we're going to use a train test split to portion off some percentage of the data. Uh, let's say 70%. So I'm going to set the train size to 0.7. Uh, so 70% of the data is going to go to our train set and the other 30% is going to go to our test set. Um, now the values we want to split are x and y, uh, and they're going to return four new values, which will be x train, x test, y train, and y test. And this function also shuffles the data for us, uh, so we can include a random state at the end uh, to ensure that that shuffle, and therefore the split is always done in the same manner uh, when we run this notebook. All right, so if I now, instead of returning df, I'm going to return these four values. Uh, and I want to get them over here. And now we can look at x train. So x train is now only 70% uh, of the data. Uh, x test will be the remaining 30%. Um, but you'll notice that the absenteeism column is no longer with us. It is uh, in y train now. This is just the absenteeism time. So essentially, we're going to use this to predict this. And there's one more step I want to do before we do that, which is scaling the data. So there's uh, many models will benefit from having all of the columns take on a similar range of values. So we're going to use a standard scaler, uh, which will give each column a mean of zero and a variance of one. And we're going to fit the scaler just to the train set, uh, because it, it's good practice to assume you don't have access to the test set at the time of pre-processing. So uh, x train is going to be scalar dot transform x train, and x test is going to be scalar dot transform x test. And these are both uh, transformed with the fit that we had only on the train set. Um, now I'd like to point out that these functions return numpy arrays. So although it's effective, I'm not able to view it nicely. So I'm going to turn it back into a data frame, both of these, uh, after we've performed the scale. 
and we can set the column names equal to x.columns. All right, so here is our data set that's been scaled. And you'll note if I go in and check the means of each column, uh, they're all extremely close to zero now. Uh, whereas before, if I, if I never scaled these, uh, and we check the means, they're all over the place. Uh, also the variances uh, are all over the place before, but now once we scale, uh, the variances are all extremely close to one and the means are all extremely close to zero. So, uh, all right, this is ready to be fed into the model. So we're actually gonna have a bunch of models. Um, I imported them all at the top here. We'll just grab those. Uh, and we're going to start training. So I want to create new instances of each of these. Um, and I guess I'll just copy this in. I already wrote it before. It's just a lot of work to rewrite it. So we're going to create a list of models. Actually, it's a dictionary that maps the name of the model to the actual instance of the model. And you can see uh, we're using a, a comp uh, various number of different models. Some of them are linear, some of them are simple, and some of them are more uh, involved in um, like gradient boosting, random forest, and uh, the final three are just extensions of gradient boosting, essentially. Um, so let's go through each model for name model in models.items. Uh, so models.items will return the key value pairs as tuples. And then uh, we're going to fit each model. So model.fit, and we're always fitting on x train, y train. Then we can print out just uh, a confirmation message that the model has been trained. Uh, so it's going to go through and train each one. And now it is finished. <coughs> so we can view the results. So uh, to view the results, it's very simple. Uh, for name comma model in model models.items, just like we had before. Uh, we're going to print out the result for a given model. So we're going to say the name and then the R squared score for it. So by default, the uh, if we call model.score on one of these, we'll get a, an R squared value back. So R squared, R squared score is a, is a measure of how dispersed the data is from our fit. And it's a good way of getting an idea of how, uh, how good a regression task is going. Um, it can take a maximum value of 1.0, but that is rarely, uh, if ever, achievable. So we're going to uh, print out R squared score, and then we're going to format it to five, I think five decimal places is good. And we're going to pass in model.score on the test set, X test, Y test. All right, and we can see the results. Um, wow, so this is very interesting. Uh, if I if I run this again, see if we get any different results. No, it's it's very interesting. You can see, um, hmm, the, it seems like all the complex models are really not doing it. In fact, the support vector machine is giving us the best results. So, it looks like the support vector machine with a radial basis function kernel is giving us the best results. So what I'd like to do is actually create one more model. We'll call this SVM model because it's giving us such good results uh, compared to the others. I'm going to make this an SVR, which is support vector regressor, which is actually the name of the RBF kernel one. Uh, so you could change the kernel on this if you want, but by default, it has a radial basis function kernel. Um, and I'd like to change the regularization strength um, Actually, I believe it's the inverse regularization strength given by C, which by default, I believe is 1.0. Uh, and this is, it's basically a control over um, how much of the loss function is looking at trying to, uh, well, support vector machines a bit uh, involved to get into, but essentially it tries to minimize the distance between uh, projections of the data points onto a line. Uh, and um, the regularization strength tries to balance between uh, minimizing those projections and minimizing the size of the uh, weights themselves. So uh, as we increase this, 
uh, we're going to increase the amount the model cares about the projections and uh, dec decreases the amount that the model cares about minimizing the weights themselves. So we're going to see how that affects the overall performance. So let's fit this model on the train set, X train, Y train. Uh, and we'll, I guess we'll just print out the score. Uh, so uh, support vector machine r squared. And again, we'll format this to five decimal places and pass in SVM model dot score on the test set. All right, so uh, yeah, we have the same value here. Uh, that's our regularization strength has not been changed. Let's see if we change it, what happens. So we actually got an increase in performance by raising it. And I believe that means if we lower it, we're going to get a decrease. Yeah. Uh, so let's see if raising it further will further increase it. All right, so that decreased it. So 10 uh, is doing better than 1 and better than 100. What about 20? Uh, nope, 10 is better than 20. What about 15? Uh, looks like 15 is actually an improvement. So around 15 looks like maybe that's that's a, a pretty good uh, C value to use. Uh, this is beating any of the models that we trained with the default parameters. Uh, so yeah, that will uh, sum up today's video. It was a quick one, uh, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.